Hi, this is Catherine. This is Taking Tea with Catherine. This is a tea called Defender Tea. It's an herbal blend from the Astoria Tea Company. It's got marigold and sage and other things. It's supposed to be good for the immune system. It's supposed to be good for digestion because I want to be in as full health as possible for Jane Austen July 2022 because this is my TBR and this is Jane Austen herself or at least an artist rendering of an artist rendering. Anyway, this is a nice tea and it will keep me calm too because I do not need any more energy. Jane Austen July is one of my favorite um, events on booktube and I think it's a lot of people's uh, one of their top uh, events. It's up there with a couple others in the year for me but this is one that I go all out for because I mentioned earlier um, this year that I was having a bit of a panic and I had to cut down on my TBRs a little bit. I had to keep them very simple, but I said, I'm not doing that for Jane Austen July. I am going to give myself an impossible pile to work from and I will have certain ones that I prioritize and certain ones I will leave to mood. And of course I'm going to read other books that are not anything related to Jane Austen, but that's not what you're going to see in this video. Um, because this is just about this particular event. So this um, is a readathon. It's been going on for a while. The hosts for uh, Jane Austen July 2022, they are Katie at Books and Things, Marissa at Blatantly Bookish, and Claudia at Spinster's Library. I will link everybody down below. Um, and uh, they do such a great job. They make these wonderful videos and then so many other people in booktube join along and have their own talks about what they like about Jane Austen, what their favorite books are, etc. And it's and it's just wonderful. I really don't like the month of July for various reasons, so it is a great way to distract me, um, as I've said many times before, and um, it's worked these past few years. Um, there's a bunch of challenges related to it that um, mainly the, the uh, you know, you're in if you, you are in, <laughs> if you read a book by Jane Austen. So uh, there's a group read, and actually there's two group reads, but um, the second one is Lady Susan, which is a like a novella, a, a epistolary novel of Jane Austen's that uh, is funny, is good. I'm not in the mood for it this, this month, so I'm probably not going to join in that one. But the other um, group read is Pride and Prejudice, which is one of my very favorites. And I mean, I think it's very many people's favorites of... Uh, Jane Austen's and I have two versions of it that I am going to read from. I'm not sure which one I'm going to stick with but I had uh, put this on hold a couple weeks ago and finally it showed up in my library. It's quite heavy so I might keep this at home. Um, this version is the annotated Pride and Prejudice so that's exactly what it is. Very nerdy. I love that. I want to sort of this year, I don't need to go crazy but I just want to be able to just really get into everything behind this book and I this is the kind of stuff I can really I can really do so I also have another copy that I found recently at the bookseller when I happened to go by there um, and this is the Norton critical edition so as you can see the co the cover is not very inspirational um, it's not terrible either but it's just you know I mean it kind of looks a little bit like um, Pemberley I guess but uh, yeah, I guess that's what it's supposed to be. But it just doesn't really look great. But anyway, um, either way, the the purpose of the Norton Critical Edition is that it has the novel with some notes. It's not as annotated, but at the end it has all kinds of critical notes. So sometimes just extra stuff from the writer, the author, something, you know, biographical notes about the author being Jane Austen. And then of course, just anything related to it. So there's even an interview with Colin Firth who played Mr. Darcy in 1995. Um, and I think he's my favorite Mr. Darcy. So um, he's like, to me, the quintessential Mr. Darcy. But um, so there's a lot of a lot of things in here that I would like to read in addition to Pride and Prejudice. So I am fully committed to just reading Pride and Prejudice. So that's the first that's the first uh, challenge is read one of Jane Austen's six novels. And if I just read Pride and Prejudice, I'm going to be okay with that. But usually I like to read at least two. So I'm going to leave this one to mood. And whichever one I'm in totally the mood for, I'm going to pick. I I don't know. Hmm. What, I got these editions recently um, just because I thought they were very interesting. They're the Bicentennial edition. So they've been around for a few years now. Um, 
is what they call it the 20th anniversary editions but you know basically um and i have this beautiful copy of persuasion it also has in the back and i also have the copy of sense sensibility which is very me except um i don't usually go for that much pink but you know what that's okay um and this is the back of it so I, I am kind of leaning more towards Sense and Sensibility because I have a couple other things that I'm reading that's related to Sense and Sensibility and I think that would be that would just go well together. Um, and it's been a few years now since I've reread it, uh, but I love Persuasion too. So, and of course there's the adaptation coming out in July, which I'm not really looking forward to as much as I was before now that I've seen the trailer, but we'll see. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll read both. Maybe I'll read one of them. Who knows? The next one is, um, the next challenge is Read Something by Jane Austen that is not one of her main six novels. And I don't think I pulled it out, but uh, it's behind me. It's up here somewhere. Um, I was thinking I have a copy of a Penguin edition of Lady Susan, The Watsons, and Saniton. Two years ago, I read Lady Susan. Liked it pretty well. And then I read these are all rereads but nevertheless it had been a while um that's why i'm kind of my my outfit today is a little bit 90s themed because it's a little bit of a callback to the fact that i read all of her novels first in the 90s so yeah i'll probably do a couple of little 90s throwbacks in july which is fun for me um <laughs> i don't know about you guys but um oh yeah so it says lady susan the watsons and saniton so now this year i would be up to saniton but I want to see if I'm the mood, in the mood for it. I'm not sure if I'm in the mood for it. So we shall see. I don't know. Um, but that would be the one I would pick. Otherwise, this this book has some of her letters and other early writings that... So if I don't get to Sanitin, I can at least read some of that. You know, we don't have to go crazy. Um, number three is to read a nonfiction work about Jane Austen or her time. And I have so many books like that. Um, my main pick, I will show you some auxiliary picks later on, but my main pick is a book that I found amazingly for a dollar at Book Off because this is an actual book I've been wanting to read and I've heard nothing but good things about it. And that is The Real Jane Austen, A Life in Small Things by Paula Byrne. So, oh, I actually said that correctly. Woohoo! Um, that sounds just up my alley. It sounds like something that... Uh, will be I've heard it's a really good book about Jane Austen and her time so I I am very much down for that so that in itself would make me happy okay it's down all right um number four read a retelling of a Jane Austen book which I do a lot of lately or a work of historical fiction set in Jane Austen's time so this is interesting. You know, I got excited about this because the historical fiction based on Jane Austen's time or set in Jane Austen's time is a little bit of an addition this year. And I was like, well, I really should do something really fun with this. The only thing I found that might work, and I'm not sure if I'm in the mood for this, but I, so this isn't in my, this is more of my auxiliary pile, but I'll show it to you anyway, just because. Um, and that is Venetia by Georgia Heyer. Um, she writes Regency romances and I've read, I think maybe one of them and I liked it well enough. So we'll see if this is something that I am on board with as, la, 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 la. oh, there's two people. I have, I have the window open. Actually, there were two people on a bike and then there was someone behind them. Good times. Um, all right. And I got this last year and I really meant to read this last year and I didn't. So this is, um, uh, Pride and Premeditation. It's like a YA mystery, I think, uh, or investigation or something. So I would like to get to it this time around. Um, let's see. Let's see, it's a retelling. Okay, work of historical fiction set in Jane Austen's time. Um, and I also have, which I'm really looking forward to reading this uh, month, What Kitty Did Next by Carrie Cablian. Cablian? Anyway, um, I, I really love The Other Bennett Sister, and um, I would love to read that again, but I don't think I'm going to have time to do that in July, so 
but I would like to see a little more about uh, Kitty. She is the other kind of under the radar sister in Pride and Prejudice. Everybody talks about Jane and Lizzie Bennet, and then of course Lydia, but then there's these other two in between who don't get as much love. So it would be nice to see a little focus on Kitty. And um, I mean, she's a Catherine, you know, two Catherines, two Catherines in Pride and Prejudice. I mean, there is a reason why it's such a successful book. <laughs> and I also have this one that I got out from the library. This is actually a slightly older book, early 90s, I think. Um, oh, there's a sticker on it that looks not good. But anyway, this is, um, this is based on Emma, Jane Fairfax by Joan Aiken. So we'll see what, what I think of this one. I don't know if I'm in the mood for that because I'm not really doing much with Emma in July, but oh, my nose just did a whistle. So, um, <laughs> well, this tea's not really helping my sinuses, I guess. So those are uh, a good amount of uh, books for that challenge. There's so many other things you can do with that one. Um, I have a book coming in, it's a new release, and it should arrive before July, And if, but if it doesn't, I'll start reading it anyway. It's, I think the author's name is Jill Hornby, or Gil Hornby, I think it's Jill. Anyway, and it's called God Rashem Park, and it is the next book after her other book, not, not, not like it's a sequel, I don't think, but she wrote a book a few years back called Miss Austin. My goodness. Yes, I live in the city. It is loud. Um, I don't even live in the city. I live on a side block. But anyway, uh, anyway, um, I've just lost my train of thought. All right. So, uh, yes, Miss Austin, I enjoyed it. It was it was mainly about Cassandra Austin. Uh, well, after Jane Austen died, um, Jane's sister. And then, of course, it had a lot of flashbacks. And I really I really did like that book personally. So I hope hopefully we'll like this one as well. Um, everything that I've read so far this year, that's like a follow-up from things that came out around that time period, which was like, I think 2020, I've liked. So that's good. Glad it's not giving me weird 2020 flashbacks. Um, I see. Okay. And this is the one I'm a little bit hesitant about because I haven't been very successful in this particular one in recent years, but it's called, um, read a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen. Now this says read a book. I think we can also read poems or plays or stuff. Uh, so if I really don't have time, I could throw in a Byron poem or a Shelley or a Keats. You know, I love all these poets. So, you know, I could, I could do that. Um, or if I do manage to find the time, I've been trying to get to this writer. I, I did start with her, but I kind of left off and I will read her other book when I finally get back to Northanger Abbey, which was something I would have liked to have done this year as well, but we'll see. But in the meanwhile, I have Anne Radcliffe's A Sicilian Romance, which I'm very curious. I don't know how, how well versed she is in Sicilian romances, but, uh, it's a small, it's a pretty small book. So I thought maybe I can give it a shot, but don't hold your breath about this one. Okay. Um, and then of course there's watch a direct screen adaptation, which I will do for that persuasion, but I will also, actually I already started watching Pride and Prejudice, the 1995, uh, 95 version. I will of course re, um, watch the Sense of Sensibility 95 version, 95 I think, yes, which is my favorite, spoiler alert, my favorite adaptation of all of Jane Austen's works. It is, it is just, it's not even extremely, there, there are a few little things that didn't happen in the book or happened in the book that weren't in there. And I still love it so much. I just do. I adore it. So I will find time for that. Um, I actually have an ebook that I'm reading currently. I'm just going through it slowly. That is based, I think it's something about the first year or something. It's, um, it's, it's, I will talk about it more if I get it, if I read it further. It's basically about a year in the book and sensibility that is, that covers a time period that's quickly covered in the book and it goes into greater depth. And so far, I think it's really good. But I'll, like I said, I'll go, I'll get more thorough about that later. Um, and also, let's see, um, the other one was to watch a modern screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that this year. Or maybe I'll watch something that was suggested by some of the hosts. So I'll let you know if that happens. Um, I did have, I did have a modern book adaptation 
that I am interested in reading. I don't know how good it is, but I just thought, eh, it's called The Perfect Elizabeth by Libby Schmiss? 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 Oh, I am probably butchering that name. I'm so sorry, writer, but it's supposed to be a modern day sense and sensibility. So I thought, even though it's called The Perfect Elizabeth, but I thought that could be good. Um, but again, that's not one of my major uh, focuses. Now let's see all the other books, the really impossible pile, the part that I probably won't get to, but anything is possible. So, you know, tune in. <laughs> I, um, <clears throat> I would like to read as many mysteries as possible. I like to keep that going. And I am currently reading a Jane Austen related mystery. I'm reading The Murder of Mr. Wickham. And I will let you know how that turns out. Yes, I did start a little bit early with, when it comes to these these books. Just because I got excited. Okay. And, uh... So, um... I'll, yeah, yet, yet another thing to talk about. But, um, I have this Mr. and Mrs. Darcy mystery. It's called Pride and Prescience. Prescience? Prescience? Man, I can't say that word. By Carrie... Okay, another name I don't know if I can pronounce. It looks like it, it looks like debris. So it could be Bebri, but it could be Bebris. See, this is what I didn't do. I didn't look into anybody's pronunciation. There's going to be a lot of insulted authors out there if they watch this. But anyway, um, it says, Mr. and Mrs. Darcy, the joyous, spoiler alert, newlyweds from Pride and Prejudice have not even left to their honeymoon when they find themselves embroiled in a mystery involving one of their wedding guests. The lovely Caroline Bingley, really? is engaged to marry a rich and charismatic American. Unfortunately, this windswept courtship is marred by many strange events, such as nocturnal wanderings, spooked horses, carriage accidents, and atypical, sorry, my reading just went, atypical incidents of mortal consequence. That's a sentence. Soon the whole Bingley family seems the target of a sinister plot, with only the Darcys recognizing the danger. So this could be okay. I don't know. So it does seem like a fun, it says charming in the top. So it could be very charming and look at the picture. So right in front of my face, uh, we shall see. Um, I have another book that's based on Jane Austen life by Nancy Moser. It's called just Jane, just Jane. And we'll see how that goes. It's just Jane. That's all. Um, I found this book not too long ago at book off and, uh, I have not heard much about this on booktube so i don't know if it's good or not i guess i will find out possibly celebrating pride and prejudice by samantha no susanna fullerton really butchering names today 200 years of jane austen's masterpiece so this came out probably a few years back in the bicentennial um and look at that play table amazing so uh like I said, I want to get really nerdy about Pride and Prejudice this year, and not that I haven't before, but, uh, you know. And now here are the two last auxiliary books that I probably won't get to, but you never know. This is an ex-library copy, which I got online. I was a little disappointed about that, but this is Jane on the Brain. Exploring the Science of Social Intelligence with Jane Austen by Wendy Jones. So if I'm feeling kind of into that whole thing about psychology and stuff, this will be the pick for me. I am distracted now because my cat, which I'm not going to turn on him because that will screw up my camera, but he is being really cute right now, grooming himself. He is being like extremely cute and upside down and on like a rug that is the shape of a flower. It's adorable. So now I'm distracted from Jane Austen July, which <clears throat> let's get back to it. This is the book that I've been planning to read for a couple of years now. And I've heard some people say, eh, it's not that good, whatever. It's kind of like, you know, a lot of conjecture, but sometimes I like conjecture, so we'll see. This is Jane Austen, The Secret Radical by Helena Kelly. So, like, that could be fun. I don't know. So obviously we got to, like, the dregs of my TBR right there, where it's like, I doubt it's going to get to that point, but anything's possible. Um, but I also think that I'm going to try to just stay in the mood as long as possible. I don't want to have Jane Austen burn out. I just want to enjoy myself so much. I really do enjoy myself during Jane Austen July, but I, I'm thinking about going along with it um, 
with um well i kind of did this a little bit last year and the year before but on my instagram which is also taking tea with Catherine, very easy to find um my bookstagram i should say uh, i have I have um, an idea to do Jane Poston July, which is my cat. Her name is Jane Poston. I call her Janie. I, I almost never call her Jane Poston because it's kind of a mouthful. But, um, and I wish I could bring her on this video, but she only, she does what she wants to do. So, um, I think that um, I'm going to try to pose her with a lot of these books and a lot of Jane Austen related paraphernalia and see if I you know, remain scratchless on my arms. I think I have mosquito bites, but otherwise, um, cause it is summer. Well, is it summer? It's kind of summer already, right? Summerish. Anyway, so that might just keep me in the mood to bookstagram as well. So that is Jane Austen July, my TBR for 2022. Um, this is subject to a little bit of change. I'm, I am, I'm not going to show you again because I don't want to move my camera around. I have other books that I haven't read yet that are Jane Austen related um, but these are kind of like the best of the unread ones I think. So but you never know what I might throw in as the months as the month goes by. Um, so I will hopefully be as active as possible during the month of July. I know in the past two months I've been a little uh, I don't want to say lazy but I haven't really been feeling 100% great. I've got get tired very easily right now. And so, you know, I have to be able to go to work and do my, you know, responsibilities in my life. So I haven't been able to do as much, as many videos as I would have liked to have done recently, as much as I usually do in the months of May and June. So let's see if I can remedy this in July. Again, maybe if I could keep drinking healthy teas, that might help. So, um, I will be watching a lot of booktubers TBR videos. That's, it's going to be an exciting thing for me. You never know. I might actually see some suggestions and change my mind or add a few things based on these. So, and you may do the same watching these videos. Um, and I, I hope you enjoy. Let me know in the comments if you have any plans for Jane Austen July, reading or viewing plans, or any other plans. Do you have any activities that are Jane Austen related? I will let you know as the month goes on if I end up having any activities. Last year I read Persuasion so I decided to go to the beach and that was fun. I don't think I'm gonna get to the beach this year. We'll see. Maybe I will sprain my ankle falling and get picked up by a handsome man. Um, one of those things might happen. The other probably will not. But anyway, <laughs> that is all for now. Uh, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you like talking about Jane Austen ad nauseum, and if you like talking about classics, and if you like talking about mysteries, and if you like talking about tea, and if you like nerding out a little bit about like British things, and maybe New York things, please subscribe. <laughs> this is Catherine at Taking Tea with Catherine. Have a lovely tea and Jane Austen filled day.